More Chicagoans are being vaccinated every day, and it comes at a crucial time. Chicago's positivity rate is on the rise. It's currently at 4.5% compared to 3.3% the week prior. And the daily case average is also up. It's currently a 498 average, where the week prior it was 363 cases. Joining us to talk about this trend and more is Dr. Allison Arwadi, the commissioner of the Chicago Department of Public Health. Dr. Arwadi, thanks as always for being back. So you heard those numbers about the positivity rate. What exactly is driving this latest surge? So it is very heavily being driven by younger Chicagoans. We're seeing the 18 to 29 year olds leading the pack, uh, followed by 30 to 39 year olds. The good news is that at this point, we've not seen big increases in those in their 70s and their 80s. Some of that is because we've gotten more of those folks vaccinated. But nevertheless, we're seeing this in younger Chicagoans. We're also seeing more COVID cases uh, among white Chicagoans than we had seen previously and more on the north side. But I want to emphasize we continue to see cases across every bit of Chicago. So everybody remains at risk. And unfortunately, you know, my, my mood rises and falls a little bit with those numbers. And I am really concerned by the way that they're heading. And as Dr. Landon told us yesterday, it feels like Groundhog Day. Let's hear what Mayor Lightfoot had to say this week on this subject. It's not the playing of the sports or being at bars that is causing these outbreaks. It's the risky behavior in those settings that's creating the problem. Not wearing a mask, not social distancing. So folks, we've got to get back to what we know saves us, saves our family, saves people in our network, in our community. Dr. Arward, you mentioned young people. Young people like to go to bars and restaurants. We have a map of Chicago's positivity rate with points showing when indoor dining opened back up. And the CDC also released a study saying that there is a correlation between allowing indoor dining and increased cases and deaths. Now, the mayor says she doesn't want to go back on some loosened restrictions on indoor dining, but might she have to? I certainly hope not, and this is why we're asking everybody to double down. You know, as a reminder, we actually have quite a bit stricter requirements around indoor restaurants, around bars here in Chicago, certainly than are required and that, that we see across a lot of the state. And then Illinois is also more conservative than we see in a lot of states. Uh, my goal is not to have to not to have to go back at all, um, but we're also not in a point where we can further loosen anything, particularly on the indoor side at this time. And how do you how high do you predict this surge could go and how long could it last? Yeah, so we're watching Michigan with concern. Uh, Michigan is currently leading the country in terms of cases per capita, and they've always actually been in quite good control uh, among the Midwest states. They've often been leading the pack, and unfortunately, their numbers just continue to go up and up, and their hospitalizations, including hospitalizations in people in their 40s, are really rising as well. So we've not seen any sign of it slowing yet, and you know, the ask really is, we're not done with COVID and although we're excited the vaccine is here and making very good progress in terms of vaccinating Chicagoans, uh, now is the time to double down. The weather's good, but you got to wear your mask and don't don't think that just because it's spring, we don't have to worry about COVID anymore. So almost at the finish line, but not quite there yet. And let's talk about vaccination. So Chicago is in 1C of the vaccination phase. How is the supply doing relative to the demand? Yeah, so we still have a lot more demand than supply. As you know, we really said we're, we're opening wide. We want to get these essential workers in. We want to get everybody with underlying conditions. Uh, we hear for next week that we are going to be getting more Johnson & Johnson vaccine in particular than we've received in weeks and weeks. So we're happy about that. Uh, some slight upticks in the Moderna and the Pfizer, but really vaccine supply week after week is the number one thing holding us back. As you know, we're opening two mass vaccination sites next week and we're working to get vaccine out to providers. It's going to keep getting better over April and then especially over May. And this is happening as you hear dispatches in downstate areas like Quincy where they have a surplus of vaccine. Is there any way to sort of right size the uh, allocation here so that uh, they're maybe not seeing so much of a surplus and Chicago is not seeing so much of a deficit? So we've certainly for, for weeks been, been really encouraging the state to push vaccine to parts of the state that are under vaccinated uh, compared to compared to some of those downstate areas. You know, everybody just wants to get the state vaccinated. Um, I do think there are lots of opportunities to uh, share some of that vaccine supply or especially to make sure that some of the surrounding counties to Chicago are getting are getting vaccinated because week after week we do do a lot of non-Chicago residents. We're happy to do it, but on the other hand, we know that 
that the demand is really high here. So I'm hoping uh, that the state will make the decision to push additional vaccine uh, up to the Northeast. Um, but I'm glad that we're already starting to see some parts of the state that, that are seeing some of that slow down because it gives me hope that here in Chicago, not too long from now, this is going to feel more like a flu vaccination campaign uh, where you can get a vaccine. It's more just making the decision. Uh, and we're out of this really, really, you know, beanie baby phase of I'm trying to get a vaccine. It's coming. I think it's just weeks away. And not too long from now, 24 hours from now or 48 hours from now, Cubs games at Wrigley Field with limited capacity. Are you worried about uh, that kind of gathering? So we worked with uh, the Cubs and the White Sox, uh, looked very closely at their plans. Again, like you heard the mayor say, it's not so much the event often, which has a lot of precautions around it, and more about what are people doing in the area? Uh, what, are, what are the ways that people are celebrating, even the ones not in the ballpark and asking people to really double down there? That is an outdoor event. We feel much more confident about being able to be open with safety precautions out of doors. It's one of the reasons we're glad to be in spring, um, but we'll be keeping a close eye on it. I'm really confident in the plans that they have uh, related to that stadium. I would just ask everybody as baseball's coming, as you know, all the other things that we love about spring are coming, just don't let your guard down um, as you're being a fan, even if you're not in the stadium. So not the game itself so much, but worries surround the ancillary activities in Wrigleyville surrounding Cubs games. I have to ask you about Loretto Hospital. The CDPH is doing an investigation with the Loretto board on all those reports of off-site vaccinations that were improper so-called VIP lists that we reported on at the hospital. What are you finding so far? So we've been working closely. You know, everybody's goal is to is to get this right. Uh, I, the saddest thing is that Loretto, you know, has this long history of a, a good, strong relationship, a lot of trust with the community, and we do want to bring them back as a vaccinating partner, but we have to make sure that there are a lot more safeguards in place because of, unfortunately, some of the decisions that were made in the past. So we are meeting with them. Uh, we'll be meeting again later this week once we're, once we're, we, we're, we're, we know a full accounting has been made and we know that there are safeguards in place to make sure that they are vaccinating their own patients and their own neighborhood. Uh, we do hope to bring them back as a vaccinating partner, but that isn't going to be next week. And, and as the mayor mentioned, uh, Rush University has picked up some of that slack on the west side for Austin residents, as I understand, because I know a lot of residents are confused about whether there are vaccination sites in their neighborhood now that it's gone away from Loretto. All right, Dr. Arwadi, I know you're very busy. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Paris. Appreciate it. And I should note that Cubs game is less than 24 hours away, and Chicago tonight will be there tomorrow with Amanda Vinicky.